Let's open our recently created data source, DS Web Orders. Double click on it to open the configuration panel. We entered only some values of the connection tab. As you can see, there are additional tabs for tuning the configuration of our data source. Opening the advanced panel, the first thing you will see is the JDBC driver configuration. The driver class path shows a list of the installed drivers for the selected database adapter. The driver class is the name of the Java class which implements the driver. Both parameters are supplied automatically after choosing the database adapter. If you modify the adapter in the connection tab, you can see how the driver class changes accordingly. In the initial SQL sentences panel, one or more SQL statements can be entered, which can be separated by semicolon. The statements, which are included here, will run before executing the actual query against the data source. It is also possible to add interpolation variables in the initial SQL sentences. Here, the initial SQL sentences can either be entered manually or a file containing the SQL sentences can be uploaded, which will add all the SQL sentences into the text box. The connection pool configuration panel includes several parameters to optimize the access to the database. The initial size indicates the number of idle state connections to the JDBC data source that are created when the pool is initialized. Maximum number of active connections defines the maximum number of active connections allowed at one time. If test connections is selected, the virtual data port server validates the connection by executing the configuration ping query when the connection is retrieved from the pool. If the execution of the ping query fails, the connection will be removed from the pool as it is not valid and a new one will be created. It is strongly recommended to select the test connections checkbox and define a ping query, so let's select it. It is also possible to modify the properties that will be used by the JDBC driver when establishing a connection with the database. To modify a property, click on Driver Properties. Then you will see the list of available properties. If you need to create a new one, there is a new property link at the top of the Driver Properties table. For example, to get a list of synonyms from an Oracle database, go to the Include Synonyms property and change the value to true. We don't need that property to be chained, so let's return it to the default value. In addition to the driver class properties, if you want to enable Kerberos authentication to the database, open the Kerberos driver property section. Let's move to the next tab. Here there are more properties for configuring how to read and write to the database. The write options are only used for data movement optimization. This optimization is for transferring data from one data source to a second data source in order to execute the entire query in the second data source. For reading, we have two options. The fetch size tells the JDBC driver how many rows should be fetched from the database when more rows are needed. And ignore trailing spaces, which removes the space characters at the end of text type values. For writing to the data source, we have several options. With the Use Bulk Load APIs, the developer can select if Virtual Data Port will use the database API to load the data in data movement processes. In that case, you have to specify the location of the script, which is in charge of loading the data into the database. Batch insert size indicates the number of inserts to be executed at one time. This avoids hitting the database for each insert statement of a data movement process. The UTF-8 data types field indicates if the server should use data types with UTF-8 encoded when creating a new data movement table. The option specify custom schema allows the developers to change the default schema for a data movement operation. By clicking on the reload schemas button, Virtual Data Port retrieves the list of schemas of the database. There are other options that are available only for specific databases. For example, for MySQL data sources, 
there is an option Stream Tuples. When selected, MySQL will send tuples row by row instead of sending all of the results together when the query finishes. Finally, at the bottom of this panel, there are settings related to the optimization of queries. This is for enabling the query optimizer to use a data source for the data movement optimization. We're not going to modify the default values. The last tab is the metadata of the data source. It is set during the creation process and can be edited later if needed. These properties include the user that owns the data source, the path to the folder where the data source will be stored, and the description of the data source. This is all information which is very useful for documenting. When all the changes are done, do not forget to click Save in order to keep the information, or clear changes to ignore all modifications. As we have modified the data source, the modification date has been updated.